Today's scripture reading is from the book of Matthew, chapter 8, verses 5 through 13. I'll be reading in the New International Version. When Jesus had entered Capernaum, the centurion came to him asking for help. Lord, he said, my servant lies at home, paralyzed and in terrible suffering. Jesus said to him, I will go and heal him. The centurion replied, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. But just say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority, with soldiers under me. I tell this one, go, and he goes. And, and that one, I come, and he comes. I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus had heard, this, he was astonished and said to those following him, I tell you the truth, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. I say to you that many will come from the east and the west, will take their places at the feast of Abraham, feast with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. The subjects of the kingdom will be thrown outside into the darkness, where will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said to the centurion, Go, it will be done just as you believe it would. And the servant was healed at that very hour. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. Good morning, everyone. Today is our second week of our Lenten series called Holy Vessels. Together, we are journeying to wholeness through this season of recovery and healing. Today, we are looking at our community health, and we have a lot to learn from the centurion from our scripture for today. So I want you to imagine for a second, what is the first image that comes to mind for you when you hear the word centurion? Some of us probably think of Roman soldiers from movies we've seen like Gladiator or The Passion of the Christ. The image probably most of us have when we hear the word centurion is tough, rough, and battle-hardened. And most likely, the centurion from our scripture fits that description that we would imagine. He was no doubt an officer, part of the back bone of the Roman army, and we can gather that actually from our scripture when he explains to Jesus his authority with soldiers under him, him telling them what to do and they listen. He was the commander of probably a hundred or so Roman soldiers. So now that we have that background, I want you to think for a moment, if you were in Jesus' shoes or the disciples' shoes, this centurion coming up to them, just his very presence, was the reminder that they were not free. They were an occupied nation and a conquered people. I'm sure there were a lot of emotions and thoughts running through their minds. Scared, angry, resentful, wishing the centurion would just move along and not bother them. And I bet some of the disciples were even worried that the centurion asking for Jesus' help was a trap. And I bet others of them were really wishing that Jesus would, as they say, stick it to the man and tell the centurion to buzz off. And as we very well know and are continually reminded, Jesus is different than us and responds differently than our human emotions want him to respond. Like I mentioned last week, Jesus lived in a way that was open and accepting and loving. It's an openness that is greater than our own and perhaps greater than our understanding. And perhaps this centurion was different too, or different than our stereotypes of a Roman soldier. We assume that the Roman centurions were too busy with the emperor's business to even care about the well-being of their slaves because slaves were property, expendable properties. 
The centurion, however, showed deep concern for his slave and had faith that Jesus could heal him. And with Jesus' openness, even Jesus was even willing to go to the centurion's home to heal him. Jesus said, I will come and heal him. Now, what is remarkable about this is that Jesus would be breaking religious law in order to heal this man. Under rabbinical law, Jesus would have been made unclean if he were to enter a Gentile home. But that But does that response surprise us from Jesus? Showing God's love was the ultimate law for Jesus, and he was radical enough during that time to break other religious laws to prove that God's love breaks through all boundaries. And then the centurion responds in a way that also might surprise us. He says, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof. But only speak the word and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority with soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes. And to another, come, and he comes. And to my slave, do this. And the slave does it. When Jesus heard him, he was amazed and said to those who followed him, Truly I tell you, in no one in Israel have I found such faith. Jesus was amazed by the centurion's faith. It perhaps amazed him for similar reasons that we thought it, would, it was out of character for the centurion to be concerned about the health of his slave. It was not typical for a Roman centurion to believe in what Jesus was doing. What we can learn from this is that the power of God's healing and love know no boundaries. It's clear in our scripture that Jesus was willing and the centurion was willing to cross cultural barriers, no matter what it would mean for both of them, just to help someone who was suffering. It challenges us to live in a way where we do not judge others because of their difference to us, be it culture, race, gender, sexual identity, political affiliation, housed or unhoused, rich or poor. How can we have faith like the centurion to cross boundaries or barriers to help someone who is suffering? How can we show love like Jesus, a radical love that is braver than our perceived human limitations? How can we take what we know of God's healing love out into our community. For when someone in the body suffers, we all suffer. My colleague and friend, Reverend Ben and I were recently discussing the challenges that will potentially arise once the Federal Eviction Protection Plan or the eviction moratoriums, when that order stops on March 31st, What is going to happen to people that have needed that protection during this pandemic from being evicted from their residence? Will the homelessness population rise in our area? How can churches help in what will surely be another crisis on our hands? How can we be the church that takes on the challenge from our scripture today to leap across economic and housing boundaries to help alleviate those who are suffering. If you have ideas for how we can be more hands-on in this area, I would love to chat with you. And if the idea of doing work like this excites you, please reach out to me. And as many of you know, our friends all over Texas are in need of our help as they recover from last week's winter storms. Millions of people have been without electricity, water, and power in the state, and now the effects of the storm are busted pipes in homes and churches. We can be of immediate help to our neighbors in Texas by donating funds to help with the disaster relief. On your screen, you will see two ways to give. You can give directly to the Texas Annual Conference of the United Methodist Church, Many of their churches are serving as warming stations and serving hot food. 
all of the funds uh, will be used for this relief, but in the off chance that there are extras, it will be used for future disaster relief. You can also give right to UMCOR. I'm sure several of you are familiar with giving funds to our United Methodist Committee on Relief. You can give to their U.S. Disaster Response and Recovery Funds, and the advance number and website are on your screen to give. You can also email me if you want me to email you these links if that's easier for you. Our scripture today is about the inbreaking of the kingdom of God. It's a vision in which all people come together to enjoy one another and feast at the table of God. The boundaries or barriers that tend to separate us now are not present in the kingdom. How can we be brave and have faith like the centurion to cross boundaries in our lives to help alleviate someone's suffering? How can we love like Jesus where we show God's love in all corners of the world because that is the most important thing to us? We have the agency to bring the kingdom, this vision, into fruition. God gives us that. And God gathers us all together. May we be a community of believers that help bring healing to the world. May we be a community of believers that don't just keep the love of Christ for ourselves, but help usher that light into places we never thought or imagined we might be. May we be a community of believers that truly believe when one member of the body suffers, we all suffer. In the words of Jesus from last week and this week, I do choose. I will come. I will come. When faced with a request, Jesus makes a move to seek out, to come to help one who was previously seen to be outside of help's embrace. He moves outward to gather in, and heal someone unlikely to have crossed his path otherwise. All are within God's circle of safekeeping. So I'm going to invite you to grab your pieces of broken glass and a bowl. So if you have those pieces of broken glass that you would have picked up at the church, or maybe you have some decorative glass or rocks at your house, pause this video, grab those and a bowl. If you don't have uh, any rocks or beach glass at home, you can just go ahead and look at mine on the screen. So I invite you to take all of your pieces of broken glass and put them into the bowl. And as you do so, I want you to think about all of the people you have encountered or heard about in the last few months who are suffering lack of support. What could we do to reach out and to focus on healing of the parts of the human community we don't spend enough time thinking about? To what part of our community shall we say, I will come? Then shift your thinking to your need to be cared for. What do you need to feel safe? What connections do you need to strengthen to heal any isolation you may feel? If you are in need of something, consider this an invitation to let me or someone you know what you need without feeling embarrassment or shame about it. Jesus invites us always to ask. Take a moment to think on this, and then when you are ready, Pick up the container of broken pieces and breathe in deeply. Invite that spirit to live and move in you in a special way to strengthen your connection to others and your role in making someone's life safer. Keep the bowl in the place where you can see it regularly this week, perhaps on your dining room table. Friends, may we choose. May we go in his name. Amen.